Okay, here I have my top 10 best list for Andy Griffith episodes. Number 10, I have Andy's Rival. This episode is in season 6, I think episode 2. And Helen has to meet with this man from the PTA. And he, and they thought she was he was going to be a woman. And so everybody's really shocked. And Andy gets jealous the whole episode. Because the guy seems to be good at everything. He's, he's extremely smart. And he has like a PhD. He just knows everything. And so Andy keeps trying to one-up him. And Aunt B even tries to help him one-up him. <laughs> and I like that a lot because they don't like each other as actors. But this is like the only time in the entire series where it feels like they're on the same page. Mm -hmm. And just, the, it's really, really funny. And I, the jealousy element of it is so underplayed. I mean, it's all about the comedy. It's not about the drama type crap like with the, oh, uh, Barney looked at this girl, so that means we're going to spend a whole episode complaining about it. Number nine, I have Rafe Hollister sings. And I like all the singing episodes, except for the darling ones. And... Oh yeah, I'm also surprised you didn't put that Darlings episode on your best list where Barney dresses up as a bride. Well, but I mentioned that there are other episodes where Barney dresses up. This is one that probably a lot of people won't mention. It's just funny when you see these heavy-duty Eastern um, mafia uh, criminal types and, and there's Barney. He's got this dress on and a wig and... Doesn't he wear a wig? Yeah. And, you know, and t talking like a woman. And it's just hilarious because of them and how completely out of the elements they are. <coughs> so when Rafe Hollister sings, uh, Rafe, Rafe Hollister comes into town and signs up for a singing competition. He's really good. The only problem is, is that the mayor doesn't approve of his look and, th and basically thinks he's a lower human being. And, and what happens is Andy makes him dress up in what he usually <coughs> dresses up in. And he sings a beautiful song and everybody around claps for him except for them, the mayor and his wife. And then everybody, I mean, they have him do an encore, too. Mm -hmm. And all throughout that, you have Barney being jealous because he's he's a terrible singer, but he, he's really jealous, and it's funny. Number eight, Goober and the Art of Love. This episode is fantastic. Andy and Helen and Barney and Velma Lou are mad that Goober is is the third wheel. I mean, they go to see a movie, Goober's got to see it with them too. And so they decide to get him a girlfriend. And they get him uh, what, who I should call the devil, Lydia. Mm. And she is just, I mean, she doesn't like anything. She can't do anything. She's hilarious. And, and I mean, Barney has Goober spy and, and peep on Andy and Helen watching a TV show together and to, to show how he should interact with Lydia and it's just it's phenomenal the only thing I don't like is that I think they go a little bit too far with Lydia's character mm -hmm. because I think that uh, you know I mean what does she even do I don't know. I, I actually don't remember. I don't remember them saying what she did. I, I mean, they don't. They you don't mean, tell like real you. life, not real life, but like as a job, a profession. Well, that, but also just her interest. She doesn't have any interests. Uh, but still, it's 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 phenomenal. And then at the episode, they have a callback 
to to one of my it used to be my favorite episode or one of my favorites three is a crowd where barney keeps uh being the third wheel to mm-hmm. andy and uh Ellen? and peggy oh peggy oh. Or, or it was this other blonde girl it was this other blonde girl actually and uh i mean he would go there and just and just hover over them and mm-hmm. and he does that at the end of this episode to andy and helen and it's it's exactly like what would happen in that episode and i love it number seven i have eat your heart out the funny thing about this episode is just flora she's a great new character and she, of, of course this is andy griffith's show she gets wasted she doesn't get her full potential uh, shown out because in this episode she's very funny <coughs> and uh, and it's just the whole episode laugh out loud hilarious with her mm-hmm. and uh, it's a perfect episode Th- these two episodes are perfect goober episodes number six I have Barney's sidecar this is where Barney buys a motorcycle from an army shop and he annoys everybody with the motorcycle. <laughs> he, wear, he wears a helmet and, and these goggles that makes him look like a bug and he, he, he tries to say different words while he's riding the motorcycle and uh, he disguises himself and he he runs trucks out of town and it's just it's hilarious uh, so now we're getting into the best episodes not just the the greatest number five Andy and the woman speeder I think that this is the only serious episode I have on this list and it's a perfect episode to show somebody who's never seen Andy Griffith before. It's all about this woman who speeds through town and then gets a ticket. And she refuses to pay it. And then she bribes everybody in the entire town with favors. And makes it so she doesn't even have to pay her ticket. And what happens is Andy gives her this long speech at the end about how she made a fool out of justice and she made a fool out of him and everybody else in the town and so she changes her mind and and pays the ticket anyways <laughs> and learns a valuable lesson well it's it's a serious episode it, it showcases what the town's all about and it's just really good Number four, I have the bank job. This episode has always been a classic. It's another one where Barney dresses up as a girl. And it has the best line in the entire series. When Barney comes out of the the saloon. And he, he takes off the dress in front of this guy. And he's like, what's the matter? Haven't you ever seen a man take off a dress before? <laughs> And so it has the funniest line in history, and I I could watch it over and over again. Hmm. Number three, The Rivals. This episode, Opie has trouble trying to get Sharon to like him. So Velma Lou helps build up his confidence, and Opie falls in love with Velma Lou. So... Opie, Opie cucks Barney out of Velma Lou, and, uh, and, and that's the whole episode, and, and it's just, it, this was the first episode I ever watched the show, too, mm. so it's, everything about it, and the ending is good, he, he finally gets a date with Sharon, because he actually made her jealous, mm-hmm. and, uh, it's weird though because you'd think that Barney might tell Opie to try to make her jealous 
because he does that all the time to Velma Lou. Mm -hmm. So, number two, I have the pickle story. Mm -hmm. Safi already talked about this one. It's it's funny all all the way through. Mm-hmm. It's per really a perfect episode. It, it's not levels. as not as perfect as Dinner at Eight. Dinner at Eight is my number one. And I know what you're thinking. A season seven episode is my number one Andy Griffith show episode. It's hard to believe it was season seven. That's just outrageous. Well, the number one good thing about this episode is Aunt B leaves because she leaves the town to go on a vacation. Mm -hmm. And number two, you have all the characters in the show like appearing. And so what happens is Andy has dinner with Goober, he has spaghetti, and then he goes over to Howard's house and has spaghetti. And then he goes over to Helen's house and has spaghetti. Okay. And he's basically roped into eating everything because Opie repeated a quote that he said to him mm. early in the morning that you shouldn't waste food because it, be, it could be going somewhere else, which isn't true. And because uh, <laughs> it's there and it's there already. And so the whole episode, it just built, the comedy builds and builds and builds and builds. So that's my top ten. What do you think? Well, I'm just thinking, this is an episode where Andy has to eat spaghetti. Oh, God. Five times. Oh, five, my God. Five platefuls. And he would have erped. He had three helpings at his house. He had two helpings at Howard's house because they forced him to eat the entire thing. Then at Helen's house, he had one helping. So, That's oh right. wait, no, that would yeah. be six. Three plus two plus one, six. Yeah. So. Uh, just think about it, because uh, gives me a stomachache. And, and then he. Then when, and what, what's really funny is when uh, Aunt B comes home, she says, you know, I've been gone. I know you want an ice hot meal, so I'm going to make you some spaghetti. Yeah. I guess another funny thing, because but this is a long Goober. time ago. No, no. The funny thing, this was a long time ago, and um, I don't think there were, at this point, there weren't a lot of cooking shows on. There might have been something on PBS. But, you know, there wasn't Pinterest and looking up on the internet. You had to find a recipe book. But anyway, the secret ingredient to every uh, yeah. single spaghetti Oregano. recipe was oregano. And I'm like, you know, I learned how to make spaghetti a million years ago. And nobody talked about that oregano. Was some, there was something secret about it. That was just one of the ingredients. But... They acted like it was something really rare. And I, 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 even though well, people didn't make, I don't think a lot of people ate spaghetti unless they were an Italian immigrant it, family. I, I don't. As I said, the comedy builds. You know, yeah, the comedy builds. There's payoffs. That whole oregano thing, he learns from Goober, there's oregano in there. He learns from Howard, there's oregano in there. And then here's the Helen? pay. No, here, no, here's the payoff. The uncle says he got the recipe from a chef in New York and it took him all night to get it out of him. And then Andy guesses it right out before he even tells him. And and the uncle's like, wait a second, how do you know? And that, that's what you call a payoff. So, do you have any comments about my list? No, but I think it's interesting that you agreed with me on a few of the episodes. I mean, on the Which negative ones. ones, I don't think we're our lists were in agreement no, at all. We didn't have any. I mean, you might have made a comment or two, and maybe I did, but Which we is very did not weird. have. But we did not have. I mean, none of our episodes were. 
he had completely different episodes for me. And on this one... We have two common episodes. Uh, I think we have three. Let's see. Andy's uh, Rival, Ray Hollister Sings, Eat Your Heart Out, Goober and the Art of Love, Barney Sidecar, The Woman Speeder, uh, uh, The Bank Job, The Rivals, Pickle Story, Dinner, and... So we have pickle story. And pickle story. No, okay. you didn't have the rivals on your list. You don't even remember no, that episode. No, it's, it's called something else, but it's kind of a similar thing. Let's see. Okay. But anyway, at least that's two that we didn't have of. We didn't have from the other list. In fact, it's too bad because. When we watched the Rivals episode, she went to sleep and didn't pay attention to it, as usual. <laughs> and uh, so she obviously didn't watch the episode again. And no. so she might even put it on her top ten list if she would actually watch it. Well, this is its like an episode where, um, which I talked about for like my number one uh worst episode was about Aunt B and and the, the rivals is? getting married and the rivals we, no it's just in other words there's more than one episode and they they have like a similar no they don't story I don't know I'm tired now it's getting to be that time no they don't get sleepy oh yeah oh. and there, there's also two episodes I really wish I could put on here uh Look, Pa, I'm dancing, and uh, Obi's girlfriend. Mm. As well as uh, another good episode is A Deal is a Deal. She didn't like that one. She thought it was boring. And uh, and also uh, Fun Girls. That's another good episode. What girl? Fun Girls. Oh. Okay, I think we should wrap it up now. Yeah, that's it. I hope you enjoyed that, and we will be reviewing the episode. There's just not the episode, the series. The series. And uh, and I'll rank the seasons for both of us. Yeah. I did have, but I, don't, I will, won't talk about it now. I'm too tired, and we got to end this. The when you look when you look at any of these any TV series. And uh, you will, like, let's say on Netflix, for example, and you see the titles and then episode number, and then you have the season number, and all. So you can flip through there. And I will pick out, I picked out two or three that have the worst titles. They're just stupid sounding, or they don't make any sense. Uh, they have mistakes, which is kind of, I was really kind of shocked about that, that we, they would have any, that they wouldn't be correct, and I'm wondering if you looked at an original tape of, like, an, let's say a misspelled episode, if it would, was really misspelled there, or it was Netflix's fault, I don't know, but it's really weird, but there's some, a few Floyd. bizarre times I'm going to be talking about that. Floyd. What? Floyd. Floyd? Yeah. Floyd the... Gig. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> well, I don't even want to talk about it. And then there's words, of course. I mean, there's... I mean, our culture, American culture changes. It doesn't stay exactly the same. It, it evolves. And so, certain words uh, that phrases. we used, our phrases that we used, people Americans used many years ago are not they're not used now one or the words mean something completely different now or the words that they used back then if you would have, if you would say these words that would really be bad and it was even worse because Safi Sophie accidentally called one of them something completely different than what it was, and it made it even worse. <laughs> I don't know why she did that. Well, when it gets to be late, and we've got to head back tomorrow, um, I just get tired. So, sorry, but we'll see you. We'll be back to review the series 
and good night everybody and see you later.